Heaven is for Real is the story of a hard-working part-time pastor named Todd Burpo, whose bills were already piling up before his son needed emergency surgery for his criminally neglected appendix. But just when everything seemed to be at its darkest, he hit upon the idea of exploiting his four-year-old to perpetuate a thinly-veiled lie that made him piles of money. Now, adding to those piles of money is the recent theatrical interpretation of his New York Times best-selling hoax, which Heath and our friend Eli Bosnick recently suffered through so you wouldn't have to. So first of all, Eli, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me, guys. It has been too long. And Heath, welcome back to this episode, I guess. Thank you very much. I'm doing excellent. Thank you. I appreciate it. (laughs) All right. So the first question is an obvious one. Is heaven for real? Where do we begin? Can we start with the title? Let's just start with (laughs) the title. Yeah, let's start with the grammatically incorrect title, by all means. At no point during this guy writing the book, submitting the book, did anyone go, oh, it's it's just real. You don't need to... (laughs) the word real you know i'm pretty sure it's for real like are you for real yeah no that's that's not that slang that's you don't need that that other word all right so what we've got here is a movie that's so bad that on the poster by the by the poster it was already heading downhill okay so we start the movie right and greg we just see greg kinnear and he's a good guy first thing we see he fixes a door for some free carpet he teaches wrestling to kids randomly for no reason, and then visits a grave. It's very like, he's the good guy around town. Old Greg. I didn't learn this guy's name at all. He was Greg in my head the entire time. My notes call him Greg. He will never be (laughs) anything but Greg. So then, now, we find out later in the movie, he's a a priest. He's the minister. Mm -hmm. But we do not find that out before he gets sent to go give someone their last rites. So the first thing we see him really do in the movie is someone go get the wrestling coach to give a guy his <laughs> rights. Cradle! Cradle! Is his back on the mat? Has he accepted Jesus <laughs> Christ? Punch, punch. <laughs> All right, so he wrestles a dying man into submission for Christ. With his son there, which is weird. So he brings a four-year-old while he's wrestling a dead guy in a hospital. Awesome. Oh, okay. Let's talk about redhead McWants the D. The wife in this movie... Slutty ginger whore. She just, it is a, one woman's, this movie is two things. It's a guy having a mental breakdown and pretending his son went to heaven and a woman's quest for the D. (laughs) She starts out, and you can watch this movie and see, she starts out in long sleeves and like a dress. She ends this movie in a G-string and nipple pasties. (laughs) Just throwing, she's like, She's, like, got half a douche hanging out of her, and she's like, toss me the vitamin, or I will rip your dick off and use it myself, Greg. (laughs) Right, Heath? Back me up. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, Lois Griffin uh, of reality character is great. Great. Yeah. And then he does his first sermon, and I wrote this quote down. So he talks about a bear and a unicorn. They're with a lion. I'm not going to bore. It's a fucking – I don't know what the point of the story is. The story makes no sense. He's like, once was a bear – and a unicorn, and they were in a cave with a lion, and everyone was like, hey, send us out the lion. And the bear and the unicorn were like, I would love to die with you. And then he says, and I quote, some people think the bear and the unicorn story aren't true. Some people think the Bible isn't true. I think they're both true. <laughs> At which point everyone should be like, hey, um, minister, we only think the one's true. We only- <laughs> <laughs> Instead, right? the audience goes into a slow clap, basically. It was awful. <laughs> yeah. But also, what is the point of that story? You better fucking man up and die with your friends. <laughs> Someone comes after your friend and he's a lion, you, you fuck him up. You go down. Don't go out like a bitch. So then, totally irrelevant to the movie, there's a weird scene where he's pissing out kidney stones and his friend is like how you doing in there and he's just screaming in agony and the entire theater oh they loved it they loved it it was it was weekend at bernie's times a thousand for this crowd they were like ha, ha, his dick holes being used as a birth canal <laughs> loved every minute then they go to denver now this was the most important movie moment in the movie for me the wife is like hey, we need a vacation. And he's like, I don't know if we can afford a vacation because we're $50,000 in debt, which they mention constantly throughout the movie. 
Oh, this uh, is again, where the, that unrelenting slut bag whispers something in his ear, which clearly must have been the most awful of sex acts. Absolutely really? must have been. This is the moment that I didn't understand. She goes, if you take us to Denver, whisper, 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 which yeah. means she's like, I'm going to eat your asshole, right? That's No one <laughs> That's whispers, absolute. we'll have missionary sex. <laughs> <laughs> this is the moment that drove me insane. The kid has, we flash forward in time, the kid has had a fever for four days. <laughs> four days he's had a fever of 103. Now, I'm oh, Jewish. I come from, I'm ethnically Jewish, even though I don't have invisible friends. Mm -hmm. If you have a fever for four minutes, you go to the hospital <laughs> my family. So finally, four days later, she turns to him like she just realized he has a fever, and she's like, Todd, we have to go to the hospital. And while they're driving there, she goes, faster, Todd, faster. Four fucking days right. later. Like, all of a sudden, it's a rush. <laughs> so then the kid wakes up, and he has magic powers. Now, again, I want to touch on the skeptical nature of this movie. This kid could not give two fucks that he went to heaven. It's so <laughs> obviously just a four. The story this movie tells is a four-year-old just being like, I'm a graham cracker. I'm made out of graham crackers. I'm a fan <laughs> of all dragons. And I went to heaven. And his dad's like, holy fucking shit, you went to heaven? <laughs> Tends to be the most reliable type of eyewitness testimony, that of a drugged, unconscious four-year-old, you know. Yeah, We're lucky but, this movie's not called Monsters in the Closet or For Real. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, so so kid says, I went to heaven. Dad says, oh, okay. No, not oh, okay. He's like, oh, really? I don't know if I believe. It's not even like, it's not even like a, I believe you right away. It's like a, I don't know if I believe. Everyone else in the movie reacts normally. Everyone else is like, oh, did you? Adorable. I'm so glad you're better. And Greg Kinnear is like, oh, Wow. Did he or did he not? I don't know. Is he really invisible? I can see him, but I don't know. It's just, it's insane. Then we get a flashback of the kid's trip to heaven. Oh, awesome. And heaven looks like the opening credits to Xanadu. It's just mist, <laughs> mist and lights. And then Jesus. So he goes to this psychologist at the local university. And he's like, hey, I have some questions about my son. And she gives, again, a reasoned, not mean, oh, not right, 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 right. just gentle explanation of what happened. She's like, hey, this is what called a near-death experience. Your son isn't lying. He probably saw these things. It's called a hallucination. You know, it happens. And he goes, he, he he's like, oh, okay. And then he turns around and goes, my son's not a liar. He's four. <laughs> to which the character practically turns to camera and goes, what the fuck, man? Come on. I didn't say that. Well, now, wait a minute. I'm sorry. The evidence that he's offering against the expert in the field is that four-year-olds don't lie? Yeah. yeah. My son's not a liar. Bullshit. No, he believes him because then he goes to church, right? He goes to church and he gives the most bum. Listen, I don't know how to give a sermon. I'm not a preacher. He gives the worst sermon it's like a guy talking out loud to himself on the toilet. He's like, I don't know. My kid went to heaven. Huh? Oh, now I'm on Chipotle. Oh, I don't care how good it tastes. You should have like Scott Van Pelt and those guys from ESPN analyzing his swing while he's doing it. Just like exhausting. It was terrible. Absolutely awful. And that gets the paper's attention. And then everybody in town gets in a hubbub. As right they should. Like, the, in the movie, it's played like, oh, people are dicks to him. But everyone in the movie, one of the guys, there's like a dramatic moment at the diner. One of the guys who's a fellow fireman, as a joke, goes, hey, next time your son sees Jesus, why doesn't he ask him to help us put out these fires? Which is a great fucking point. Right. <laughs> great point. And he's like, oh, I'm being oppressed. Even in no, the they're, they're being oppressed by atheist Nebraskan firemen. That's, <laughs> that's what Huge contingency of atheist yeah. Nebraskan firemen. <laughs> I want to talk about this kid's trip to heaven, though. Okay, because all he does is sit on laps. <laughs> Which means... <laughs> he went to Catholic this... heaven. No, I'm right. sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Which means that in this universe, when you go to heaven, you are the age that you are when you die, and... You only get to enjoy the things you enjoyed when you died. If this kid had come back from his NDE and been like, what's anal rimming? I'm willing to have a conversation. <laughs> but the fact that this kid thought that heaven was a colorful horse and sitting on people's laps 
means he doesn't know shit about happiness yet. <laughs> if he had been like, who's Asa Akira? I'd be like, all right, kid. I'm ready to hear. I'm ready to hear what you have to say. But now what I don't understand is, like, where is this kind con- I mean, like, isn't this evidence of the exact thing that they profess to believe, though? I mean, like, what, what do they say? Like, uh, we don't need no pastor who pre- thinks heaven is a place. I mean, <laughs> the entire premise makes no sense. They set up a non-conflict, and then they resolve the lack of conflict for 90 more minutes. Like, what would a pastor do if he suddenly found out about Jesus? What would the wacky situation would happen there? <laughs> He'd keep being a pastor and cut. Like, let's wrap it. That's the movie. That was the movie. Right. So, I want to get to the nameless heaven, baby. Ah, oh, beautiful. The beginning of the movie, beautiful. Red Fire Crotch McWants the D. Is, <laughs> she takes a dress out of the drawer that's obviously a dead... Like, from the moment I saw it, I was like, oh, a dead baby dress. She looks at it, and she's like, oh, you were supposed to be a baby, but you're not. And she puts it back in the box and she gives it to some Mexicans. True story. See the movie. It's what happens. So then she has not believed the little kid up to now because she's used her brain. And the kid is doing his coal channeling bit, which is great, by the way. And he goes, I met a little girl up in heaven. And he's like, she's like, oh, yeah. She goes, yeah, it's my sister. And she's like, your sister's not in heaven. And she's like, no, you had a baby die in your tummy. That's creepy as fuck. You had a baby die in your tummy is not children. That's <laughs> not in Frozen. <laughs> red no. rum, red rum. Dark line for a four-year-old, yeah. <laughs> right. So he's like, you had a baby die in her tummy. And she's like, oh, my gosh. You, how'd you know? Probably because you take that dress out and fucking smell it all the time. Wait, Anyways. He, he, he met the miscarried baby in heaven? Oh, yeah, he yep. did. Yep. <laughs> and he hugged her. And the mom, the mom goes, oh, um. What was her name? And she goes, he goes, he, she didn't have a name. You never named her. Which means that there's eight <laughs> majillion nameless children in heaven just running around playing the world's most depressing game of manhunt. I guess the moral of the story is that if you're going to sell bullshit to people, sell it to religious people. They have been pre-screened for gullibility. They have like a Sandlot montage at the end where gotcha. it's like, he grew up to be a man. <laughs> and for the kid, all they have is he's a normal teenager, which if the lady does not protest too much, it's like, he's fucking <laughs> fine, okay? Leave him alone. <laughs> Somehow I'm not regretting uh, having missed this one. Like there were so many moments in this movie that were just like, I wonder if Jesus likes apple pie. And I was like, oh, my God, there are kids starving in Africa. Has no one brought this up? <laughs> AIDS. What color is Jesus' horse? Who gives a shit? There's a tsunami. <laughs> Ice caps are melting, you piece of shit. All right, well, Eli, thanks again. I can hardly thanks. wait until another shitty movie comes out that our audience wants to hear you make fun of. Oh, my blood pressure. <laughs> sweet, sweet blood pressure. <laughs>